Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure to introduce the Dad Levy from the Geophysical Institute. And Dad will tell us about his thesis that he's about to finish, right, or has submitted, submit his PhD thesis. He has done in this department. He has done his previous studies in the Hebrew University as a scientist. And now, Hi. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to be here after many years. I started my, uh, my work only nine years ago, and uh, it took a long time. It's not nine months of uh, like a... <laughs> but uh, after all, it came uh, to an, an end, and I'm very happy and glad to be here. Uh, the, the, the thesis is about developing geological method for detecting submarine freshwater bodies within the Mediterranean continental uh, shelf of Israel. Uh, the method can work elsewhere, but the case study was done in, uh, in Israel, and it started from a BMBF project of Mark Goldman, Uri Kafri, Barak, and Gidon, which was submitted under uh, another name. And we had the BMBF, it's, it's a project, joint pro project with a German partner. So Bulant uh, Petskan from uh, Cologne University was uh, the joint uh, uh, project. And on this project, there was another PhD made by, by his students uh, about the same, approximately the same uh, um, uh, method. So we start with motivation. We started the project 2008, and this paper uh, was uh, published in, uh, in uh, 2013 in Nature, but it's make all the, all the motivation for the project. It's talk about off, offshore fresh groundwater reserve as a global phenomenon. And uh, you can see the highlights here, uh, and it said the potential uh, use of this non-renewable uh, reserve uh, as a freshwater re resources, resources provide a, a, a clear incentive for further research. So our research actually started before it was published, but this gives us the motivation. And you can see from this research how, how big and, uh, and uh, uh, worldwide is this phenomena. You can see in many places, it was detected in many places by direct boreholes, direct boreholes in New Jersey, it's in, in, in Suriname, it started in Suriname, uh, and I, in Suriname they used this water, and it's, it was found in many, many places around the globe. So uh, they, in, this, in this paper they are talking about, uh, about the, the, the mechanism that in, uh, during the uh, glacier age, uh, the, the, water, the, the water level of the ocean dropping down, the reservoir near the, the shallow reservoir are filling with fresh water. And this probably what happened 15 years ago all, all around the globe and probably also in Israel. Uh, so to, to, to from, from the globe, we get into our uh, small country, and we're talking about the, the coastal aquifer. The coastal aquifer, as mostly people know here, is a, is a, a sandy uh, aquifer, sand calcareous aquifer. It's subdivided to four main aquifer, uh, uh, sub aquifer, A, B, C, and D. And this is approximately, uh, uh, it's it's about 10 to 20 kilometer wide and up to 200 meter in, in, in its depth. And uh, in some places, like in Rishon Lezion, it was find, found with, in direct uh, boreholes uh, measurement that they are actually taking this water for use. They found fresh, sorry, fresh water in the sub aquifer under the, the, the well-known uh, uh, interface between the freshwater and the seawater, 
which is about above it and uh, also Yechieli wrote about it this this uh, Coral was made, uh, this phenomenon was found in 2001, and uh, since then, uh, some, some people wrote about this, but this is direct, direct measurement that we know that we have fresh water under seawater uh, somewhere in Israel. Uh, this, after, after this, uh, this uh, they found this water, Mark uh, Goldman and Uri Kafri, they made a, a big, uh, a TDM survey, we we'll talk about the method after, but uh, with, with geoelectrical method, they, they make a lot of measurement along the coast, and they found that in an area between Ashdod and Batyam, uh, they found that the fresh water are uh, in the, uh, occupying the sub aquifer under seawater sea intrusion. And uh, as you can see in one of these uh, cross sections, that you have, we have here the, the uh, fresh, uh, fresh water, seawater uh, interface, and under it, in the sub aquifer, we found uh, uh, sea, uh, fresh water. And uh, the question uh, that is asked is, is whether this uh, fresh water continue into the sea, as we see in the, in the global, uh, uh, what, what, what happened in, around the globe, or uh, or it stopped somewhere near the coast, and we need to, to measure it. So the conceptual model of the of the coastal aquifer is uh, is that it's div divided to four sub aquifer, main sub, sub aquifer, and if it's not uh, not open to the sea, if you use just the Jeben Hertzberg uh, approximation, we'll have interface with all these four aquifer. But if if uh, we take another conceptual model that uh, was uh, made by Colton 20 years, uh, 30 years ago, and uh, we see that if there will be such uh, changes, that it can be that the, the, the seawater cannot intrude into a uh, sub-aquifer, and the sub-aquifer will be, will be left filled with, uh, with fresh water. And this is what, what we need to understand and how how long it will, uh, it will enter to the sea. And uh, what we need to, to, to use some, some, uh, some uh, method for, for, uh, for detecting it. And the best uh, method used in, the, in onshore is the geoelectrical method. Ge geoelectrical method, uh, the, the main uh, 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 the strength of, of the geoelectrical method is by the, the correlation between the, the resistivity and the salinity. If we take just fresh water, and this, this work is from, from borehole uh, measurement because they use this approximation in boreholes uh, for oil and gas. Uh, because of that, they're talking about uh, deep temperature. But we have a, a correlation between the the water salinity and the, the, the water resistivity. And if we put it into the, the Archie, Archie, low, uh, Archie low, and we, use, we, we can use alpha and beta as one, it's a good approximation, we, we see that, uh, that if we, we, we take into account the approximate 20 to 30% of, of, uh, of porosity in, in aquifer, We'll get uh, uh, in, with seawater, which, which are 0 0.2 ohm meter, we'll have uh, about 10 to 15 ohm meter for, for the resistivity. And uh, as, as I said, the, the, when, when we take this saline water and the fresh water into consideration, uh, co compare to another uh, lithologies that uh, we, we can. Uh, we 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 have uh, on earth so the saline the saline water are very unique because they have very uh, low resistivity and uh, and uh, and all compared to all other uh, uh, lithologies but graphite and, uh, and sulfide which are very rare in our area so if we found in our area uh, low low resistivity around uh, one uh, meter we know that it's uh, uh, something saturated with uh, saline or brine water.
Uh, in a work that, uh, this, the work that uh, I mentioned before, of Goldman and Caffrey, they, they did uh, around 40 calibration measurement around the, around the, uh, around boreholes in the coastal aquifer. And they found very good correlation between fresh water and res uh, fresh water, brackish water and, and saline water uh, and resistivities. And we can see if the, the resistivity in the, in the coastal aquifer is about 10 ohmmeter, it's, uh, it's relative to uh, uh, correlated to fresh water, if it's between uh, 3 to 10 ohmmeter, it's, co it's correlated with brackish water. And it's, if it's around 1 to 2 ohmmeter, it's, uh, it's correlated very good with saline water. And with this approximation, we are going into the sea uh, So the, the, the time domain electromagnetic uh, the time domain electromagnetic method it uh, was used in, in, intensively by Mark before onshore in Israel. And uh, it was used also with short offset, uh, short offset uh, configuration, central of short offset, and it was used also, also with long offset configuration, also, also uh, in many places uh, around Israel. The idea of of uh, of this uh, all the all the electromagnetic uh, method is that we uh, we are measuring we entering direct current uh, into a, a, a loop or a, a wire and we measure we, we we stop the current and as we stop the current we induce a, a, a secondary a, a secondary eddy current and this secondary eddy current in, uh, uh, create, uh, uh, enter into the ground, penetrated, pen penetrated uh, into the ground, and we measure, in, uh, and we, we measure the voltage that are uh, induced from this uh, secondary uh, uh, eddies current into in, in our loop, uh, in our receiver loop. Uh, Lotem uh, Lotem idea is actually the same, but the configuration is different. Uh, the, in in LOTEM, they use very long offset usually, and, and because they use, uh, they use a very long offset, they, uh, they, it's, it's uh, one, one of, of the main uh, issues that come, uh, come uh, the bad thing that from long offset, it's you, you uh, lose of uh, the lateral uh, resolution. But it was uh, uh, used also in, in some uh, uh, project around Israel and around the globe, uh, for sure. The, the most, uh, the most uh, commonly used today of electrical, uh, uh, geoelectrical methods in, in offshore is using, is called, they called it control source electromagnetic, but uh, they, it's actually uh, all, all, all the, all the, methods that we, we are using are controlled. Uh, it's not empty, but uh, this is actually frequency domain electromagnetic. And this is uh, uh, mainly, it was uh, uh, in a big use of uh, oil and gas uh, industry. Uh, uh, it was found that it is very good in detecting uh, uh, res uh, resistors uh, like oil and gas and uh, in uh, and it, it is uh, in use in, in many places uh, uh, around the globe in the last century. And the, in the last few years, the, the use of this, uh, this method is decreasing because of the oil and gas industry is this decreasing. But uh, it's, it was in a, it's widely used and give very good uh, det uh, detection of uh, resistor, resistor. But, but it will not work in our condition of shallow water. In shallow water, I don't want to enter into the, the, uh, the geophysicals of it, but it won't work because of, of air, air waves phenomena. The, the time domain electromagnetic was used in its central loop configuration by Mark in the, in the Sea of Galilee. 
and uh, and they and they got very very good results. They they measure uh, with this uh, method all around uh, all all around the uh, the Sea of Galilee, and they found that the fresh water and below they found the the saline water that uh, uh, subsea in the sediments. But when when we take this configuration into the Mediterranean with all this uh, wave and uh, the Mediterranean condition, we understood that we can, we cannot use this kind of uh, of uh, instrument uh, in the near shore of, of Israel. So what we do, we have equipment for, for measurement of, uh, of uh, short -term measurement. This is what we have. We have a project. We, we don't have an unlimited budget that we can bring a CSM uh, equipment. And uh, we, we need to modify the equipment into the into the Mediterranean uh, Sea. So we understand we cannot use the, the configuration of the central loop. So we thought, why not to use grounded wire? It's very easy to, to ground the, a wire into the sea because of the conductive water of the sea. And, uh, and uh, if we take theoretically in 1D Earth, the AB loop will give us signal uh, of fourth of the central loop. But so we went to the sea first. First attempt, a feasibility study. This was uh, late in 2008. After we just start, started the project, we said, "Oh, this is easy. We get out to the field. We put a, a grounded wire next to the coast. We make central loop, and we compare. If we get, if it uh, will have a, a fourth of the signal, uh, it's go, it's good. It will work." So we make central loop and we make another measurement with the long offset. So we started with the problems. When we went uh, to the field, in the field when you measure, you can see the, 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 the measurement on field. And we realized that we have a sign reversals. Sign reversals are very rarely we, uh, uh, come with central loop configuration. And this is something that we didn't expect to, to have. So we, if we take the signals of the, of the central loop uh, divided by 4, you can see this uh, blue line. And if we, we take uh, the AB loop with the long off uh, short offset, 50 meter offset, it should be the same. But we have the sign reversal, and we couldn't understand what happened here. So we took the other measurement with the long offset. And here we have clear, uh, clear uh, uh, data set. And we can uh, interpret it with fresh water, saline water of the, of the interface, and uh, fresh water in the subaquifer. So we found that the place is OK. The measurement with long offset is working. But with short offset, we have a problem. So. We, we, we didn't know what to do. And the, after a very, very long time, we came into the, uh, the we, we started uh, to use 2D modeling, 4D modeling, and we realized that we have multidimensional effects. The multidimensional effects of, from this uh, model, if we use the same uh, uh, geometrical parameters that we use in the field, we'll, we'll get this, uh, this uh, uh, synthetic data and the synthetic data included time reversals. It's not the same as what we, we measure, but we understood, we understood that because of this uh, multidimensional effect, we'll have something that, uh, that will give us, uh, can give us uh, time reversals. So this is part of the measurement and we need to consider it in, the, in our future. So, after that, we make another profile. We took the same, the same configuration with many offsets between 20 to 130 meters. And we see that the sun reversal is moving to longer times. And around one, with offsets of around 150 meters, it's disappeared. So we understand if we will use, maybe if we will use this configuration, we need to use long, uh, long offsets to, to measure, and if not, we'll have a multidimensional effect and we'll have a problem with, with the, uh, interpreting the data. 
So after a long period of tests that I, I won't uh, get into details now because of the time, we get to our first, uh, first profile. We went into uh, to Palmachim and we make a, a, a measurement along a traverse of uh, from 400 meters from the shore to one kilometer from the shore. And we tested the, we, we measure from both sides of, of, the, of the transmitter. Why we measured from both sides of the transmitter? We said if we'll have effects and we, we sum, sum uh, the, the measurement together, maybe it will cancel, the, uh, cancel it and we'll have some mean of, of the measurement and, and we'll have something that uh, we can work with. But we didn't uh, learn from the, the measurement that we made before. We used short offsets of 50 meters, uh, fortunately. Uh, when, when we uh, take the, we went out to the field with all the old, the old vessel of the uh, ILOR and uh, with uh, small boats. And as, as I told you, we used, you can see it's all, we took a, a land, a land a uh, equipment to use uh, offshore. And I can tell you uh, 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 something that we started with. The first time we went uh, to the sea, we have a small boat uh, in GII, in the Geophysical Institute, and Mark said, ah, let's go to the sea. We throw the, the, the receiver uh, 50 meters from the shore and we will measure, no problem. So we took the small boat and Mark, as you see, is not a young guy. And he, he, went, uh, he went out and we throw the, the, the anchor and we throw the receiver and we start to measure and I see the GPS. Mark, we are moving, five meter, 10 meter, 15 meter, 50 meter. In few minutes, we were far away and we understand that, <laughs> that when we are in the sea, it's nothing like, the, like a land measurement and you must use much more, much more um, facilities. And uh, for, for every one of you, that if, if you will go to the field, it's very tough to walk out in the, in the, in the sea. Uh, so one of the tests uh, we, we did is how, how to uh, accommodate the, uh, deploy the, the equipment. And we start test, tested few uh, uh, configuration and we came into conclusion that it will be the best if we will use the, the uh, receiver. On, uh, on the sea floor and, uh, and a floated uh, and a floated transmitter because floated transmitter we can see it and we can see that it is a, 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 a straight and if we throw it in the, into the sea floor we don't know where it's go and if we and we use the receiver if we, we made the heavy receiver and we hope that it won't move uh, during measurements so we went out to the traverse and we make eight measurements, it took us uh, uh, two or three days of, of uh, work. It looks, no, this two days, two days. In one day, no, not, maybe I don't. And when we, we went uh, back to the office and even, <laughs> even on the boat, I said, you can see the measurements and you can see, you can feel like, uh, because, because uh, Mark has a lot of experience, you can feel uh, what, what, uh, what will be the interpretation. And uh, we see the first two measurements. We see that uh, the apparent resistivity of the 350 meters from the shore, it's coming up, which is a good sign. It's, it's a sign that we'll have a, a, res a resistor, so we'll have a fresh water. And if, if, uh, for 450 meters from the sea, we see no target. So at first we measured this and we said, oh, maybe, maybe this is the end. It's, it's only for a, a extended a, another 400 meters. So well, what, what we can do, but, and we take it, uh, say this measurement into a 1D uh, interpretation uh, software. And as you can see, we are in the first measurement and we'll have a target. We, we interpret it that we have a target. Okay, very good. 
and we continue into this uh, 450 meter, we get uh, uh, 100 meter into the sea, and and the interpretation, no no fresh water. So maybe this uh, this is the end. But the the will the uh, things that happen that when we get into the 650 600 meter, so we have the same the same uh, idea that the near shore measurement give us a up, a, the, the apparent resistivity is rising up, while the, the far, far from the shore, a, a receiver is going down. And, and the, so we have here the 450 plus 50, 450 meter from the shore, it's going down, it's seawater, it's no fresh water, and in 550 meter we have fresh water. And when we, we took all, all the eight measurements, we found that we have, they are divided into two groups. One is uh, the land side group, which is one side of the, uh, of the uh, transmitter. And the other side is, is, a, is a seaside. And when we take it, uh, in, in a, we get a mosaic. And this is irreasonable hydro, hydrogeologically. It's, uh, we cannot have aquifer that 50 meter is fresh, 50 meter saline, 50 meter fresh, 50 meter saline. It doesn't work like this. So something else is, is going on, and we were not smart enough to understand what we have in the beginning, because the, 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 we solved this, this uh, problem with this multidimensional effects, as we had in the first measurement, and, but it also took us a long time to understand it. And uh, when I understand this, so Mark said, oh, you'll have pH. Because before that, we, when, when he saw the measurement and we saw what's, what's happened, he said, no, what we'll have, nothing here, 400 meter mosaic, it's, it's very problematic. But when we found this, Mark said, oh, we have something. And, and the, 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 to some, the, the idea is the difference between, in this kind of measurement between the 1D measurement, 1D calculation, which give us very small uh, difference between target and no target uh, uh, places and what's happened in the two dimension. If we take the two dimension uh, uh, model with land side, we have a very big difference between uh, target uh, uh, model and no target model. While if we take the, the, the opposite side, so the measurements are almost the same. So we cannot detect anything from the seaside. So we were very happy when we, we, we found this, and this led to the first publication that would con uh, concentrate in this phenomena and of the coastal aquifer. We call it at the beginning the coastal aquifer, the 2D coastal aquifer. And uh, in, in this uh, paper, we get into theoretical uh, study of the effect. And we compare what we found in our, in our measurement into another arrays that are used or not used or can be used uh, with the geoelectrical method. Uh, and we started with the 1D model. And you can see that this is EZ. EZ, I didn't uh, uh, tell you about it. EZ is when you use in vertical dipole as transmitter or receiver. And it's well phenomenal, it's well known that, uh, that this will give us the best uh, uh, target. What you see here is a tar target response. It's the ratio between a model with target to the model without the target. And, and the EZ is give the best, the best resolution. It was well known, but, it, but it's very uh, hard to, to use it. They try to use it in, uh, in works uh, for, for the oil and gas industries with a lot of money. And we, we can dream that we can use it uh, properly in, in our condition. If, if we could use this, this was the best, uh, the best, uh, uh, the best uh, solution. But without it, you see that the, the ratios are not so big. You had 20, 30 percent, 50 percent uh, uh, target response. So all the, and we took it into the 2D modeling, and we compare 
uh, all, all the calculation I may make comparing a model with a target and what model without a target. Without a target to a model with a target, which, which the target is, is 100 meter resistor as a fresh water we, we thought we'll have in the offshore of Israel. And when we, when we are going into the 2D modeling, something very weird is happening that if, if in the land side we'll have, we are having very, very big target response, this is 0 0.2. So the, the, measure, the, the signals are six or seven times time, uh, 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 smaller than the, the signals from, from no targets. So this, is, this gives us very good detectability. While in the, in the seaside the condition, we have almost nothing, almost nothing. And uh, we, we tested the same, the same uh, idea with long offsets, and we found that in, with long offsets, we have smaller, smaller effects. So uh, we, we take this uh, calculation into a geometrical uh, uh, modeling, and where the offset, the, what you see is, is offset uh, uh, in, in a, a time slice. It's a time slice of models. And uh, we found that we have a sun reversal with no target uh, model. We have a sun reversal around zero. This is what we think uh, we'll have. But uh, with, uh, with, with, with uh, a model with a target, we have a sun reversal around 30 meters. And we make our measurement around 50. So this is the huge difference between the, the signal that we measured. And as we are going to long offset, lo longer offsets, this, the, 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 the uh, resolution is getting uh, uh, smaller. And we, we found that the optimal uh, place to put the, the receiver in our condition is between 50 to 100 meter, we said. And you can see that if we are going to the seaside, it's no, no, no difference, almost the same as we saw in our measurement. Uh, we, we compare this, uh, this uh, 1D uh, calculation in 2D with seaside and land side, and, and, you, can see, uh, and you can see that this the big difference, I said, about six times bigger signals, as I said before. And when we take this uh, this uh, uh, this mod uh, this uh, calculation into we take the forward modeling and we take, put it into inversion and and we we see that if we are a one D inversion we see that if we are uh, with land side data we can detect the, the the target very good and if we are in the with the seaside the, the the black one we cannot detect anything even if the target is small as uh, 40 meter and less. The, the example is, is 40 meter, but if also with smaller target, we can detect it with, with uh, 1D inversion. Um, so the, the next step was with the publication was what, what, what will happen if we'll have, uh, if we are go, we're taking this, this idea into the oil and gas industry. industry. And we, we tested a, a, a scenario with a resistor of 100 meter at a depth of one, uh, one and a half kilometer. And it was first uh, just a one calculation that uh, I, I ran. And we found this. And this is, uh, although this is a theoretical calculation, we measure around the 1.0 second. Uh, uh, we can make our measurement. But these uh, signals are two or three, it's, it's uh, very hard to measure it uh, if we go into out, uh, out to, to the field now, to the sea. But theoretically, it's work and we'll have this, uh, this effect. So we're very happy. And, and we, have, we, we have the conclusion of the first, uh, of the first step, that EZ will, be the, will give us the, the, the best uh, resolution. The EX and BYDT can give us a, a re good resolution, but with long offsets. Uh, but this is what's important, that the, the BZ, it's what we measure, give us a very uh, good resolution 
and the effect occur only in short offset land size array. And theoretically, it will work also for deep, deep, uh, deep uh, uh, targets. So we, felt we, we understand that we have something. And what we're doing with this, we're going to into, we, deep, we get in, into deeper calculation and deeper un understanding of this, uh, of, of this uh, array that we found, the method array. Uh, this, this is not a method because we use the same the time domain method, but this is a different array with this multi-dimensional uh, effect. And this led to our uh, second uh, publication, application of marine EXBZ uh, transit uh, system for delineated near shore resistive targets. So in this, in this paper, we, go, we went out from Israel into a general uh, uh, idea of how it will work in general places. So we take our array, you, you know the array, and we, 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 we start to, to uh, understand, to test different scenario what will happen. And the first scenario we, we, we tested is different bathymetry. So we tested no bathymetry, a, a, a gradient of 10 meter per kilometer, 20 meter kilometer, 50 meter kilometer, and we, and we understand that if we're talking about shallow targets, the, uh, the target response, you can see here, this is a target response, but uh, this is logarithmic scale. So the target response can be very big with the, with the deep, uh, big uh, gradients. And, but if we are going into a deep model, the, uh, so uh, let's go back. We'll, we'll have uh, the, the target, target response is very big if we are in the land side, this, uh, dot, dots are the land side. The, the full uh, uh, lines are the sea side. And we see that uh, in uh, shallow targets, we'll have no resolution with, sea, with, with sea side, only with land side. But if we are going into a deeper, uh, a deeper target, so we'll have a resolution in both sides. So this is something we didn't do. Knew. And we realized that the calculations that I saw you about this one and a half kilometer was made with the 100 meter per kilometer gradient because this, by chance, I make this calculation by first, and which gave us very good, very good target response. But if we if we would have taken 10 10 10 meter per kilometer, it wasn't. Uh, look uh, like this, and maybe we will have no, no detection at all. The detection will be very, very, very small. We we tested it in different uh, in different scenarios of bathymetry, and we found it very, 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 very similar. So it it's work in in uh, in different bathymetries, but and the the idea is the same as I saw you before. We have the the target uh, the target. Uh, a, a model. This is the same as I showed you before, geometrical sounding. And we have the, the no target a, a, a sign reversal, which is around zero. And the, the, the sign reversal of the target is moving from the zero. And we have this area for the measurement. And it's all, almost the same in the, in the short, in the, in the shallow target. But if if we are going to the deep target, the, 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 the picture is totally different. We are talking about two seconds. We talk about 0.1 seconds in, in the shallow target. And, and here in shallow uh, bathymetry, it's almost the same. The target, uh, the, the difference is very small. But if we are going to a, a big uh, a bathymetric gradient, we'll have a good detection, uh, a, a good detection. We, we tested scenarios of uh, the vertical resolutions and the vertical resolution in, uh, in 1D model, you can see that uh, it's, it's very, very, very small. When we are going into a 100 meter uh, uh, target, uh, shallow target, so uh, you can see that the detection is, is uh, getting bigger and we can detect even a 20 or 30 meter uh, target. And if we take in the seaside, we see nothing. And we, we tested the same for the, the deep target. So with 1D model, you see nothing. In the, in the, uh, in the 
land side you see a uh, good detectability and but you can see this uh, detectability also on the on the uh, in the opposite side we tested the edge effect that edge effect is it's not a, a lateral resolution it's what happened if we with the, the target is finished and we we take this measurement into one beam version because this is the only tool we have and we found that it's it's give us it's give us a, a very good uh, det uh, edge detection of few hundred meter in the shallow tar uh, shallow target but the depth of the target is it's not so good and uh, in the deep target also the, the the edge detection is good is good we can detect the edge but we, you can see that the target here is uh, around one kilometer and we can see we, the the 1d inversion give us uh, that uh, target is from uh, 250 meters so it's very bad in uh, in detecting that the target but but the edge of the target well this is when we take the, the data into 1d inversion while if we if we compare it into LOTEM, the LOTEM can detect very good the, the 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 target, but the lateral resolution is very very bad. You see, it's more than kilometer, more than one and a half kilometer, uh, where they detect the, tar the edge of the target, so and where is the actual target? We tested it. I, I will go fast. We tested it in with a 1D and 2D, 2.5D with small target, and we found that this this uh, array can detect also very very small 3D target of one kilometer by one kilometer, and uh, it's it's very important uh, for for not for uh, uh, fresh water, but if we take it into oil and gas. So the conclusion of the second stage is that the the coastal effect. Uh, uh, enhance the detectability of the time domain uh, marine electromagnetic time domain measurement. The niche of bathymetry is a, a crucial uh, rule of, of the effect. And, uh, and the, the ability is not so accurate uh, where to detect the, 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 the target, but the target age. And this will lead us with the final few minutes that we'll have into the applied geophysics that it's uh, submitted into, uh, not, not yet published. And uh, we're going back into our uh, uh, coastal aquifer and the measurement of uh, Mark Goldman from 2006, where they detect the area from uh, uh, Ashdod up to Tel Aviv. And here you can see, although it is red, there are very few measurements here. There were few measurements because of the they cannot uh, make measurements of uh, time domain along the metropolitan of Tel Aviv. A lot of uh, uh, no, uh, background noise and uh, which are very bad from this uh, for this measurement. So the conceptual model we talked about it. It can be a close a close uh, uh, aquifer or open aquifer. And bef be during our work, they will make a, a in in intensive uh, hydrological modeling. Of, of uh, this scenario and they start try to understand from this modeling whether the aquifer is closed or open but the unfortunately the, in these two options they they uh, it's become reasonable uh, from the modeling as you can see in closed mode closed aquifer model they have a, a, a interface in here and in a, in open up model they have interface here so you cannot say from the modeling whether the aquifer is open or closed so our uh, measurement we come to to help us and we we will look about this traverse that are, is going up to three kilometers from from the shore and uh, the traverse measurement and the the results of this best fit model the best fit model that we get is uh, give us a, a resistor of uh, we what we think in is a, is a, a fresh water that is ending around three kilometers from the shore. But as you know from all geophysical methods and many calculations you are doing, that you have uh, sometimes a multi a multi uh, 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 non uniqueness of, of the the data and may, maybe other model can fit the, sa the same uh, the same data set. So we get uh, and. And we, we we have four questions that we are not we are not sure about them, 
about this model. First of all, we found that the target uh, thickness is, is very big. It's 170 meters, although we are known from the, from the shoreline, it's only around 100 or 120 meters. Second, the resistivity of three ohmmeter above the, the target, we see that above the target, we must put a, a, a higher resistivity than the background, which is one ohmmeter, and we didn't understand why. The third question is the target uh, thing to 100 meter with a resistivity of 50 ohm meter. If we started here from 200 to 500 ohm meter, we get in here into 50 ohm meter, so, and it gets thinner. And the four uh, questions that rise is the sharp interface to low resistivity. The, 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 the two first questions are very easy to, to answer from the modeling. As you can see, in the modeling, the the uh, aquifer between this uh, this aquifer is saturated in this case of of a, of a, uh, of a fresh water saturated aquifer uh, sub aquifer is saturated with fresh water. If it's saturated with fresh water, even though it's an aquifer, it can give us a, a high resistivity. So it gives us a big thickness because we measure also the aquifer and not only the aquifer. And the second uh, qu uh, question that rise about the three ohmmeter of above the target, you can see from this modeling that we have some fresh water dipping, uh, uh, going up uh, from this uh, aquifer uh, up into the, the aquifer. And probably this would what give us the higher resistivity. For the, uh, so we answered the first two questions and we have now uh, this uh, uh, question three and four. And, we, for, to answer this sharp interface, we'll go into some sen sensitivity uh, measure, uh, study of this measurement of uh, S3 and S4, which are very close to, to the target edge. So the sen sensitivity test, test uh, uh, first sensitivity test was to detect the target edge. We tested the target edge from 2.5 kilometers uh, to, to 3.2 kilometers, and this is all the all the responses we, we get. So the fair, the best responses are getting from 2.7 to 2.9 uh, ohmmeter. So we can we can move the the edge from uh, if if it's sharp edge from uh, in this uh, distance, but it cannot be uh, 3.2 kilometer. Uh, so 2.8 kilometer is the best uh, the, the best for this sensitivity test. The second sensitivity test was to check if we change the the back the we we continue this uh, this layer into with a, a, a different resistivity from one to fifty ohmmeter and we tested all these uh, these scenarios and we found that if we continue with one hundred meter uh, thickness of uh, target we get a background resistivity a, a resistivity of two to three ohmmeter which is very brackish water. Maybe it's not a saline water as we get at the background, but it's very brackish water. The, the, the third the sensitivity study wa was if we it's continue with a, a thinner uh, a layer with a 10, 10 uh, ohmmeter, and we tested this and we found that it can continue if we take this scenario it can continue to the infinity with 10 ohm meter, but it will be very thin, only 30 meter. And if we take the force uh, study, it's the same with 50 ohm meter. So it can be only 10 meter. So if we conclude all, we take the conclusion of this, all four, four sensitivity studies, we found that the sharp there is sharp interface to low resistivity or the aquifer thin down and continue to 30 meter, 10, 10 meter, depends on the, on the resistivity that you continue. And this lead us to uh, the idea that if we have a, in the conceptual model of a, of a closed model, we'll have a fascia uh, changes. So we have interfingering and the interfingering gives us a thinner ring. The, 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 the aquifer is get thinner as we go to the west and this something that we see in the in the in the results and oops. 
and if we go back to, to the modeling results, we can see that in this open or closed uh, scenario, the interface is around two to three kilometers. But if we are going into this, uh, this uh, <coughs> uh, uh, closed model, so around the, the area where it's the, the factual change between this aquifer to aquifer, we have very sharp boundaries. So the sharp uh, uh, freshwater uh, uh, saline, saline interface is give us the idea that we have a, a closed aquifer. And if we take all our measurement in uh, the, the interpretation into a, a, a hydrological model, uh, the conceptual model, we get very good idea of what we'll have. And if we make it in nice, nice picture, we have something like this and we believe that the, the aquifer is continuous, it gets thinner because the inter fingering, and maybe it's continue. You see this um, uh, question mark, maybe it's continue uh, further to the east, but uh, to the west, but uh, with very, sh very uh, small layer. So we can conclude uh, all the idea, all what we found, and we found we can measure, uh, delineate the fresh uh, water extension in the sub aquifer into a 30 kilometer strip between the city of Ashdod to the city of Tel Aviv. There are more measurements about this northwest, uh, uh, southwest, uh, south north uh, uh, profile that I didn't sh show you, but this what it uh, gives us, and it's ex extended up to three kilometers from the shore. So the conclusion: the ge geological uh, measurement managed to delineate offshore freshwater body within the lower sub-aquifer at depths of between uh, 100 to 250 meters. Uh, such offshore TG TDM measurement can also serve as alternative to density and to anthropogenic urban coastal area as in Tel Aviv. In Tel Aviv area, we couldn't measure, but offshore, we, may, we can may, may get, 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 get good measurement. Uh, offshore freshwater extension of deep uh, coastal uh, sub-aquifer CND occupy a strip of water of approximately 30 kilometers long and three kilometers to the west. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any question? I have a question. Can you estimate how much available water are there for? It's, it's a good question. We, because what we found here that the, the measurement we, we, are, we have the area of, of the, uh, uh, the, we delineate the area of the water. We can give a, a, a rule of thumb 20% 20, 20, uh, uh, of porosity. But the problem that we found here that also the aquicludes between the sub aquifer, we see it as fresh aquifer. And we cannot know if we have 100 meter or 150 meter of uh, high resistivity, it can be 50 or 70 or 100 meter of aquifer. So there, they can be I, more than a, a 1 billion cubic meter for sure. It's a lot of water you, you can, uh, you can uh, get from this area, but I, I cannot say it if it's five or or, or, or two, or it's 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 a lot of water, and they can use it from from a borehole near the shore. The idea is to use it from a, a, a not expensive borehole that you can uh, make, uh, like they did 2001 in in Batyam, and you can uh, use this water from but from Ashdod to Tel Aviv. And I hope that the water authorities will uh, get the idea and make some uh, more test uh, drilling uh, in the, through the sub aquifer. Plan to do this? I, I was uh, invited to, to the water authorities to introduce them uh, this work. So, uh, you know, it takes a long, a, long, a long time, but I hope in a few years we can see some more uh, drilling in this, uh, for this sub aquifer. Hello. Uh, 
two questions I have. Uh, one, do you have any idea why there? Why there? No. I, I, test, I try to look at seismic data sets, but it's very hard because it's near shore and it's very hard to, to see something in this area. It's the, some part of it, it's the Palmachin uh, disturbance, but it's not all the, uh, all the area up to Tel Aviv. So it's very hard to say why there and not in other place. Although on the onshore measurement, also in Yakum, there is a, a small strip of, of uh, fresh water ne next to the shore. This is the, a long strip, but in, in the, there are some other points, let's say, that was found in the, in the longitude the onshore uh, uh, survey. But why this? I have no idea. The other question is, uh, how far offshore will this work? I know now after the second uh, at the first idea at, at the first when, when we've been in the first paper we, we we said that it will work up to three kilometers and we said that it will work up to three kilometers because we took the the we, we look into the time zone up to 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds if you go further into the deep uh, water you need to measure for longer times but we can see that it will work in very long uh, offset, it will work offshore, it will work in very, it will be very, work very good if the bathymetrical condition will be uh, with sharp bathymetry. I think also if we are going, I didn't test it, but I believe because, because what I saw in all, all uh, around this work, that even if you are far away from the beach, but it's very, very steep, what you will see in the measurement, what the, the measurement will feel, it's only a few kilometers from, from, the, from the measurement. So if you get 20 kilometers from the shore and it starts to become very sharp and, and you make your measurement with bathymetry of 20 or 30 or 50 meter uh, per kilometer gradient, you, you can use this, uh, uh, these ideas, but in the technology to use it is far beyond us. It's very, very expensive. And uh, I don't know anyone that can give us it for testing. I will be very glad but, uh, <laughs> to work in uh, deep water. Is, we found that to work in shallow water was very, very, very challenging, challenging in what we have. So it's ended theoretical point of view, but maybe one day someone will use it. Anyone else? Okay, thank you very much again.